we're going to look at the process of translation. Now, before you actually look at this, because we're going to go into some of the higher level details here, make sure you have a strong understanding of the central dogma of biology and some of the previous videos or find some other resources to make sure you fully understand it. The idea that DNA codes for proteins and that one gene, in other words, one specific section of DNA when transcribed into mRNA and translated by a ribosome will actually produce a specific protein with specific amino acids in those sequences. So overview really quickly. Transcription is where DNA is transcribed or copied onto an mRNA strand. M standing for messenger RNA. Now it's important um, for translation. And for transcription, all you need to, needed to know is that DNA turns into mRNA and the bases A, T, C, G get transcribed into A, U's, C's, and G's on the RNA strand. So you also need to make sure you understand the difference between DNA and RNA. So up until now, we put a little M on RNA, which stands for messenger RNA. But we're going to see in translation that there are two additional types, tRNA and rRNA. tRNA is very important. rRNA, rRNA, not so much. Okay. And so for translation, what's actually happening is the mRNA that was created from copying the gene in the DNA will actually leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm of the cell. And when, is it, when it's in the cytoplasm of the cell, it's going to meet up with ribosomes, which you've learned before from basic parts of the cell 101, um, are the protein factories, are the protein factories. They're the places where proteins are made. So really briefly here, before we look at it in some diagrams, and there's plenty of animations out there which will make this make sense. So you should study this, then go search for animations and see if you can pick out all the different pieces that are happening um, so mRNA is the messenger RNA. It carries the genetic code as the copy from the original gene. The tRNA we're going to see in a second here. The tRNA, uh, two things that T helps me to remember. One, it's a, it, it helps us to transfer an amino acid to the correct codon. And the structure of the tRNA actually kind of looks like a T. That will be in one of the later videos. The shape of it kind of looks like a T, but I don't think that's why they named it tRNA. It's mainly for transfer RNA. So the transfer RNA is going to pick up and transport amino acids to the ribosome. Finally, rRNA is more uh, just structural, a structural component of ribosomes. So actually, to, in order to build an actual ribosome, which we don't have to worry about here, um, the ribosome actually is made of some proteins itself, and it contains some R. RNA, which we're going to see. All right, moving on. There are three steps. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly and then probably do a follow-up video to use some better graphics for this. So translation consists of three main steps. So when I'm building my protein, that's the whole idea, right? The trans translation is about building the protein. It starts three steps are kind of easy to predict. It's like beginning middle and end. Initiation means the starting. Elongation means we're starting to increase the length of the actual protein by adding more amino acids. And then finally, it's going to terminate and it's going to stop and uh, that protein is just going to fold up. Now, you've seen this before, the famous direction. In DNA replication, the direction is important. In transcription, the direction is important. And guess what? In translation, the 5' prime or 3' prime direction is also very important. And you can think that the ribosome moves along the mRNA. So if you have a strand of uh, mRNA, if you have a strand of mRNA, and then you also have a little protein, sorry, a ribosome, if you have a ribosome, then this actual ribosome will be moving along the mRNA, reading it, and it's moving towards the three prime. So this would actually be the five prime end over here. This would be the three prime end over here, and the ribosome is moving in that direction. Okay, so that's not too difficult to remember, given that pretty much everything happens in the five prime to three prime direction. A little side note: I think you might know this from before, but ribosomes can either be bound or they can be free. Oops, I just delete, deleted the words behind it. If the, if the ribosomes are bound, then the proteins they produce will actually uh, be put into vesicles and they can be delivered to the Golgi apparatus to be shipped outside of the cell. Whereas uh, proteins that are made by some of the free ribosomes are actually going to be using 
uh, those proteins inside the cell for a particular function. So just one thing to keep note of about that. All right, let's look at the specifics of what's happening here. Okay. So there are a couple things you need to know. So here's the mRNA. So I've been using that as a red strand for now. So remember, think of that as, as red. And I can see that there are little letters here. I'm not signifying what letters they are, but I know that every three of these is called a codon, and each codon codes for one amino acid. So the very first step in initiation, actually the ribosome kind of, uh, how do we say, constructs itself around the actual mRNA molecule. So uh, you can think of the ribosome as being made up of a small unit and a large unit, and they join together to make the complete ribosome. So the mRNA first starts by binding to the small ribosomal unit. You can see that represented here. And the very first codon, the very first codon right here, is going to signify the beginning. And often it's probably um, the codon that signifies the start of a particular DNA sequence. And AUG is a common one. And it turns out that AUG will code for the amino acid methionine. But how does that actually get here? So here's the mRNA. Here's the codon AUG, and this molecule right here, this is the, oops, this is the tRNA molecule. So I should actually label that more clearly. So this is the tRNA molecule. So this guy right here, this guy right here. And at, at attached to one end of the tRNA molecule will be three letters that actually match. AUG matches with UAC and the UAC is actually attached to one end of the tRNA molecule. Very important. The tRNA molecule on one end, there's an anticodon which matches the codon down here, and at the other end of it, it's actually going to bring the correct amino acid. So, this weird shaped thing here is the first amino acid. I'm coding it by saying AA, and it turns out that that happens to be methionine. Why? Because AUG codes for methionine. So, this tRNA didn't just deliver something random. It has a specific anticodon that matches this codon, and it has the corresponding amino acid. So this tRNA only, this specific tRNA is only looking for AUGs, okay? So the first amino acid has been brought over here. And now the large ribosomes, ribosomal subunit binds, and then so we have what's going on here. And so we have the final... Uh, the constructed ribosome. Now you can kind of guess what's going to happen. This ribosome is going to start moving to the right and this mRNA molecule is going to look like it's shifting to the left and we're going to go to the next codon, the next codon, the next codon, so on, so forth. So let's check that out down here. Uh, you can see what's happening is that uh, here's that first amino acid. The tRNA is still attached. The second one comes in matching the codon with the anticodon and it brings the second amino acid. That's not too difficult. This is just going to continue on. Turns out there are three parking spaces uh, called E, P, and A. And so uh, don't worry about what those stand for right now, but you can see it in this order, A, E, P, and A. So the first place that this one is actually going to bind is to a spot called the A site, and then it's going to shift along, and the first amino acid, uh, the first tRNA moves to the P site. We're going to see this in the next, the next picture a little bit as well, too. But the second amino acid comes in and fills in the A site. The first one has moved over to the P site. You might have to go back and check that out again. So moving further along, we can see uh, now we have three going on. Look at, these, look at these labels here. That's the third codon. That's the third tRNA. That's the third anticodon. And it's bringing a specific amino acid that's coded for by this particular codon. Here's a longer description of what's happening here. A third tRNA molecule matching the third codon is bringing the appropriate amino acid. And then between the first and the second amino acid, we have a peptide bond actually being formed. So it's connecting these two together. Remember that two amino acids form a bond? The bond in the middle between them is called a peptide bond. Um, Here's a sketch of what I was trying to show before, the three parking spots. So basically the first tRNA comes in here and then it moves and then it moves. And each time you can see this chain is getting longer and longer. So these, this is the growing protein chain. Amino acid, amino acid, amino acid. And eventually it's going to reach a codon that says to stop. And it could be UGA, UGA, 
Okay, that's what I remember. Uga means to stop in caveman language. So uga, when you say uga, that means stop. And then uh, don't worry about this release factor, but there are a bunch of other things that happen basically to help to kick this off and it actually separates. It reaches something called um, when the stop codon reaches the ribosome, then everything is going to disassemble, detach. The polypeptide comes off. Now this is way too short. Normally we'd have at least you know two or three hundred amino acids, some even more, and this is going to fold into its protein which could be an enzyme or a hormone, and it's going to go do its job. The mRNA comes off. The mRNA could go join and create and start up another ribosome um, subunit structure in order to create more proteins. But then the small ribosomal subunit separates from the large ribosomal subunit, and everything disassembles, and we can continue doing the same thing. One final thing to understand is something called a polysome. So it just... It's a fancy way of saying many ribosomes connected to one mRNA molecule. And you can see that here. Here's the mRNA molecule. And if, for example, this was the, I can actually tell by, because this is longer here, they're probably moving down this way. So I can even label uh, this end as the three prime end. And this side would be the five prime end of the mRNA. You can see that these ribosomes are moving down to the right towards the three end, and as they get there, and inside what inside here we're having, you know, tRNAs are flying in, flying in, and they're dropping off uh, an amino acid, and the amino acids are getting longer. The amino acids are being attached, and this protein chain of amino acids is getting longer and longer. So I can tell they're all moving this way. So just several ribosomes can translate one mRNA strand at the same time, producing multiple proteins simultaneously. And here's that diagram, a nice diagram showing uh, some of what's happening here. You can see here's a large subunit, here's a small subunit, here are the three sites, the E, the P, and the A site. If you want to know, it's called the exit. That's not a bad way to remember that. E is exit, so once the tRNA reaches here, it's going to fly off and it's going to leave its actual um, amino acid here. There's the mRNA and the ribosome I can tell is probably moving to the right because it has to happen, translation has to happen in the five prime to three prime end. Okay, my description just made it sound like this process is super duper slow, but go check out some animations and you'll see exactly how fast this process is and it's really, really impressive. Every protein in your body is being made in this way and it's all coming from instructions from an mRNA molecule, but this was just a copy of the original blueprints which are stored inside your nucleus. Okay, a lot of stuff there. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Another video is going to come up because believe it or not, we actually have to understand the tRNA molecule in a little bit more detail. All right, if you have questions, please post them on Edmodo. See you next time.